uh, just briefly, could you tell me just a synopsis of the film? So uh, Freema is the story of Kara, who is a woman who actually, it, the, the story takes place in a society where um, abortion has, has been criminalized again. Um, and she is faced with having to, you know, to, to put an end to her pregnancy. She, she has to, um, she, she finds an illegal abortion clinic and without spoiling too much, she, um, she's faced with the repercussions of, of having to go through um, a very illegal and very unsafe abortion. So then she puts her, her health and her, you know, like at risk, basically. Okay. I, I did watch the film last night. Yeah. Very, very captivating, very interesting. Thank you, thank you. So um, I am curious, what year did you write this film? I wrote the film in 2018. Okay. So yeah, so that was, well, I, now it's like four years ago, but that was yeah, three, three years ago, I would say. <laughs> End of 2018, yeah. Okay. And what was um, your motivation or inspiration for writing on this particular topic? Well, I've always been, you know, really passionate and very interested in human rights and uh, women's rights more specifically. And um, I guess in probably in 2016, 2017, I was doing a lot of research on, um, you know, women's liberation in the 1960s and 70s and, and just doing a lot of research on that. And I came, I came upon a couple documentaries, um, one of which is called Reversing Row, which talks about, you know, the very conservative agenda to, um, to reverse Roe v. Wade. So I was really taken back when I, when I saw that documentary, because in my, you know, in my experience or in my view, I always thought that abortion rights and, you know, women's rights, that we were protected from, from having to go back to, That's you know, kind of set the, exactly. So I, I was like, I can't, I can't believe that this is where we may be headed. And it just, the more I was reading up on it, the more I was realizing that this, this was definitely a possibility. And, you know, in the United States, but also here in Canada, um, you know, and society has become so polarized, in, you know, it's, it's more and more polarized. We're just, we're having a hard time talking about these issues without getting, you know, aggressive when it comes to, you know, race or abortion issues or women's issues. Um, anything political is really difficult to talk about. So, um, so yes, yeah, so I was really, you know, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not, um, I'm not a doctor. I can't, what I do is, is I make films. So it, it was really, I wanted to sound the alarm. You know, it was really vital to me that, that I felt a deep calling to tell this story. Okay. Are you originally from the U S or Canada? I, uh, I was born in Canada. I have a lot of family in the States though. So I'm almost half, half. Yeah. Okay. So when you're writing a story on this topic, are you kind of viewing it more from a Canadian lens or like a U.S. international lens, do you think? Well, you know, the story is, it takes place in Canada. Um, but for, you know, it's not really, for me, it's not really important where the story takes place in the sense that it, it could be anywhere around the world. Uh, it is reality. It is the reality of many women in different countries um, with everything that's happened, as you know, in Texas and, and, you know, across the United States, it's a reality that's, you know, in my view, unfortunately is becoming more and more of a reality. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's, and it's going to affect, you know, and it does affect women, or I should say, you know, people of low income and people of color, you know, the LGBTQ community, it's really devastating to a lot of women, you know, and so what kind of reception have you had for the film? It's been in festivals and... Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I've, I've, got, I've gotten a lot of great feedback. Obviously, it's not, as you've seen the film, it's not an easy film to watch, you know. Um, but for me, the topic was just so important. And I really, you know, felt an urge to, to talk about it that um, I think it, it hits home for a lot of people. I think it... Um, it starts discussions, which is really what I set out to do as well. So 
you know, the, the reception has been, has been great, has been great, but, um, obviously it's not, it's not a feel good movie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I want to just switch gears a little bit about you as a filmmaker. So you mm -hmm. write, you direct, you produce, you also act. Yeah. Do you think your directing is impacted by you as an actor or did you start one before the other? Yeah, definitely. Um, I, you know, I was mainly an actress for over 20 years. So that was, you know, that was my job. And I started producing and I started directing. And um, obviously, I, I think I know how to talk to actors because I know what it feels like to be in front of the camera. And I know how vulnerable you feel and how, you know, I, I love the relationship with the director because you're, you feel like you're building something with someone else. And it's just so creative when you're on the same um, it's just so fulfilling when you're on the same page and, and you, you know, you speak the same language and, and you're, you know, you're trying, unfortunately, we don't have a lot of time on sets, but, um, but, you know, when you, when you get a chance to work with someone who really speaks the same language as you do, and, and, and you feel like you're going in depth into your character, I think it's, it's the best feeling in the world. So I try to do that with the actors I work with. I try to, you know, I try to find actors who have the same sensibilities as I do, who, who, um, who see the world, not necessarily in the same way, but who, you know, where we understand each other. I think that saves a lot of time. And I think we, you can go deeper when that happens. I agree. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Are you an actor as well? Yes. And yeah. And oh, nice. <laughs> Amazing. Okay. So yeah. you know what you're talking about. That's great. That's great. Yeah, it makes a huge difference when someone understands where actors mm -hmm. are coming from, when the director understands that. Yeah, yeah. So did you study um, filmmaking at all or are you more self-taught as far as directing? I'm, I'm self-taught, yeah. I mean, I, I've been on sets for, as I said, over 20 years. So I've seen so many directors, I've worked with so many people and uh, I just, you know, it, I was always captivated by even the technical aspect of, of making films and, you know, just, and also like the, just how you talk, you know, it's just, I worked with so many directors who were amazing. And then I worked with a couple who weren't, <laughs> who, who I learned a lot from because I saw, I was like, ah, uh, see, that's that, you know, where you see that the director is so hard on an actor that you're, you're seeing him break and you're going, oh, that's not, he's never going to be able to get him back, you know? So I, I learned a lot what not to do as well. Um, doesn't mean I don't make mistakes though, but unfortunately, but so people are learning from my mistakes now. So it's, it's great. <laughs> Wonderful. There's one uh, scene I want to just, I mean, mm -hmm. item I want to bring up. So I noticed when she's standing and waiting um, for the transport, she puts on a red scarf. Yeah. And I know red can play a lot of different emotions and evoke different things. Was that your idea or someone else's? Sorry. Actually, that was in the script. I have to say I wanted to stay away from red. I didn't want it to be red in the script. I think it was supposed to be purple. Um, but then for some reason, we couldn't find the exact purple I was looking for. And, you know, with the costume designer, she had many, many scarves and the red was like the, the it was, it had to be kind of flashy because that was in the subtext. This is her, the red scarf is uh, the signal. She puts it on. It's not just to keep warm, although it was really, really cold, but it's also a signal for the truck driver, you know, to know that this is the woman he's supposed to pick up. So um, it's not that clear in the film. I didn't want it to be, it doesn't, people don't have to necessarily understand it. Um, but the subtext to it was, was you know, she had to bring a certain color scarf so that the, um, so that the driver could recognize the woman, you know, and know who to pick up or not. Um, so yeah, as I said, it was supposed to be purple, but um, it ended up being red and I was, really happy that it was in the end, you know? <laughs> I think it plays well with the other aspects in the back of the truck and the meat and everything. It's kind exactly. Of you know, these things sometimes are just, you know, you, they're like meant that. to be. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. For sure. Yeah. So you have a 2019 film that was nominated for an Oscar. Is that 
Marguerite. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Crazy. Okay. Were you able to go to the ceremony or? Yeah, it was, it was pre pandemic. So, so it was great. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. Haven't had that much fun since then. I have to say it just, you know, with anyways, I don't know how, how you guys, I mean, in Texas, I think it's, you're probably not, um, in confinement. We're in confinement here. We have like, we can't, we're in, we have a curfew at 10, you know, it's really, it's very strict here. So, um, so everything is closed. Theaters are closed and yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. We're, yeah. We're kind of free. Out there. Yeah. <laughs> Good we're for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I mean, that's a different, that's a different topic altogether, but, but you know, it just, yeah. So no, the Oscars was, the Oscars was just, magical really stressful obviously because you know it's uh it's 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 overwhelming to be to be to be nominated for an oscar but um but yeah it was it was a lot of fun very cool well i wish you a lot of success on this film and i know that it's getting some buzz um that it may go that way as well and um, my final thing i wanted to ask you is what do you hope people like take from the film well, my, my main goal was that, you know, no matter what your stance is on abortion rights, that you just hopefully, you know, you have compassion and empathy for what the main character is going through. Because these, when you take rights away from women, when you take these rights away from women, it, it doesn't mean that abortions are, you know, are not going to take place. It just means that women are going to have unsafe abortions. and um, and you know, 70,000 women die from unsafe abortions around the world every year. So that's, you know, that's a lot. That's way too much. And I, and I, I really hope that no matter what your religious stance or political stance is on, on the subject, that you at least understand that these affect real women who have real lives. And um, as I said, it's going to impact lower income women and women of color more than anyone, you know? So, um, yeah. I just, I just hope that, I just hope that people are, um, are touched enough to, to see that these bans and these regulations are just insane. <laughs> they really are. And they're terrifying. They're terrifying for women's rights. Well, yes, I definitely think that comes across in the film. I would yeah. say watching it, it's, um, it's, it's painful. It's a little traumatic, but it does kind of get the viewer to step out of their own personal feelings and mm -hmm. see through somebody else's eyes. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, good. Thank you. Thank you for that. All right. Well, um, it was really nice talking to you. Nice and talking to you too. Good luck with um, your future projects and, you know, maybe I'll work with you someday. That'd be great. Yeah. Keep in touch. It was great to meet you. Thank you so much for having me. All right. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. With screen reader. <laughs> Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.